Franklin, with America's favorite adopted pup. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Lloyd Wright, Sinatra, Zappa, Seltzer, and his friend and favorite Franklin dog adopter, Michael Seltzer. I'm Don Was, Oak Park's 116th most regarded music producer, and now here's Franklin. Hey, everybody, thank you, thank you, welcome back. Welcome back, and oh, thank you to my great band. You guys are so hot tonight. I appreciate you. Thanks to my band, and thanks to the goat of Blue Note, the great Don Was. Thanks for filling in for the vacationing uh, Dick Burton and the exhausted Doug Podell. Now, Doug was spotted last night with Gary Graff at the Jeff Lynn ELO gig. And it was notable that they didn't invite me backstage with Jeff. But hey, Doc of Rock, I mean, it, if you guess that you've played more ELO on your little radio show than I've played in my basement, you'd be wrong. <laughs> but anyway, uh, full disclosure, Doug and I were once rivals when I had my own huge show on Detroit's classic rock station, WCSX. You remember Terry and Mike at night. Apparently, those old rivalries uh, never fade. But on to uh, Don Was, the icon of Oak Park. Uh, how many people in this audience went to school with Don Was? Can I see hands? Oh my God, almost everyone. I swear, everywhere I go, I mean, I was in Alabama and a guy recognizes me and he claims he went to school with Don Was. Uh, but, but I'm gonna tell you the real deal. All my life, my cousins from Oak Park would tell me when he became famous without actually going, uh, he, he would, he would, they went to school with Don Was. And now, you know, he's a prolific producer and an artist. He has Grammys where the sun don't shine and produced Bonnie Raitt and the Stones, Chris Christopherson, Dylan, Elton John. And in 2012, my wife, Lori, oh, wait a minute, she's here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my wife, Lori Seltzer, you've heard much about her, and our other son, the wonderful Winston. This is Winston. That's right. Oh, my God, I'm so surprised. I didn't know you'd be here. I just decided I'd You know I what? Join me, because we're talking about okay. that crazy night in Belfast that, that was in fun. 2012. That was fun. Can't so, make this stuff no, up. No, this is true story stuff. So we're sitting in this bar in Belfast at uh, the Culloden Hotel, right. where Van Morrison right. spends a lot of his time, and we're with the band uh, uh, after a gig, and Lori's on one end of the bar with the bass player, and I'm on the other end of the band, uh, uh, end of the bar with, uh, I don't remember who, and the bass player says to Lori, do you know who that guy is? That's Don Was. And she says, oh my God, Michael, we have to go over and say hi to Don Was. We've been hearing about him our whole lives. Yep. And so I says, let's go over there. So we go over and we introduce ourselves to Don. And I mean, this guy is a legend, right? He's one of the most prolific producers in the country. Yeah. He's worked with every He's major amazing. artist, but humble as can be. So I says, you know, I'm Michael Seltzer, it's my wife, Lori, my cousins, Andy and Nancy, went to school with you in Oak Park. He goes, oh, Andy and Nancy, oh my God, let's take a picture together and we'll send it to him. And so we, Took, uh, took a picture and we sent it to Andy and Nancy. But then he says, <laughs> he let's down. call Nancy right now. <laughs> Don't you remember? Right. Oh, that's and, right. And we, and we called her in California and from Ireland. We were in Belfast, yep. and I don't even know what the time difference Probably was. Probably six, nine hours yeah, now. Yeah, right. Because it's three plus. And who would we call? Andy or Nancy? Nancy. Nancy. Sadie. So anyway, so we Sadia. had a phone call. We had a phone call with my cousins. And anyway, Don invited us to sit down and join him. He was great. And we had a wonderful time. Fast forward to now, of course, years later, Don becomes the president of Blue Note Records. And our son, Justin, works as an A&R guy at Capitol Records. He meets Don. They become fast friends. They're both from Detroit. They share a common bond. Don says, I want Justin to be on my team running Blue Note. And now, 80 years after the, f the founding of Blue Note Records, Don Was and Justin Seltzer run that label together. It's crazy stuff, man. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's really the, great. It's the best. So, that, so anyway, thanks, Don, for that wonderful intro. Uh, we appreciate you. 
And uh, I've got a big show today, got some great guests lined up. I'm so happy that my wife of 48 years has joined us on set with my other son, Winston. They look kind of alike, but they're not. People say, how do you tell them apart? And I say, do you have kids? And they say, yeah, can you tell them apart? <laughs> well, it's crazy. That's anyway, true. thanks everybody. Uh, we'll be right back with my first you, guest. And uh, God bless you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate that. My pleasure. Yes, yeah, thank you. For decades, I've taught you everything I know. But only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, welcome back, everybody. What a great crowd. My God. And I'll tell you what, this is a big, big day on The Franklin Show because my first guest is the esteemed and fantastic Chef Carl Hakim from The Market Basket. Yes, I'd say three quarters of the audience here are here for you. I mean, you are beloved in Franklin. So I am so pleased to have you on the show. Thank you. And I just, uh, I just want to tell you, man, you look great. Thank you. Look you look great. Thank and you. And you're, you're so missed. I mean, I know there's a history here. There's a history of this market that a lot of people don't even know. Right. I mean, I was in touch with uh, Steve Showers, who was the owner of the, of the building. Correct. And his family goes back into the, into the 40s with that building. Right. And it was called Golfdale Market. Correct. And his grandparents started it. And they moved it. There was it, it was actually next to what is uh, the Franklin Grill. It was Correct. next to there, and they moved it to the building that it's been in for all these decades. Right. And I mean, what a great history! And then so you came to us in the year 2000, yes, which was the year that everything was supposed to stop working and everybody was Y2K crazy. Correct. Yes. What a great year to have you in our village of Franklin. Yes. So so, uh, tell me a little bit about your experience in our community. Like, who were your favorite celebrity guests who came along and, and uh, okay. visited? Okay, so Mitch and Janine Album. Yeah, he wrote a book uh, called Tuesdays with Maury. Correct. And he and I are in a battle over that because I wrote a book just before that called Wednesdays with Lori. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you, it's a, it's a, a nasty uh, situation. Uh, the public has probably heard about it. And, uh, but anyway, okay, so Mitch Album. Yeah, go ahead. Who else? So Mitch and Janine yeah, yeah. are my good customers. Yeah. I got no problems with Janine, but Mitch, you know, uh, come on. Okay. <laughs> Tuesdays with Maury. What the hell? Dan and Jennifer Gilbert were very good customers of yeah, mine. I, I've heard about Dan. Yeah. 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 Great, I mean, great people. I wish you would do something with the city of Detroit. You know, they need to step up and do something, right? Yeah, he tries his best. He's trying, but he could do better. I mean, how much? I'm kidding, Dan. You're much, fantastic. We love you. How much, I walk by your house all the time. How much could the guy do, poor thing? You know? I mean, good God, he's the greatest. Uh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah, I remember that, actually. So Hugh Jackman, I forgot what he looked like because I don't really see his movies, but he came in the store one day. Yeah. This big guy comes walking through the aisle, and he yeah. goes, I'm here to meet Chef Carl. <laughs> oh, really? So I said, okay, who are you? And he goes, oh, I'm Hugh Jackman. And then yeah. I realized, oh, that's Hugh Jackman. Yeah. I said, well, oh, you know the movie he was, he was here for? Yeah, Rare Steel. Well, that was the second uh, time. The first time, he came to do the life story of Michael Seltzer, and that's oh yeah, yeah, I know yeah that was that, a, that yes. was a big, uh, and then there were some problems, the writer strike and all of that, but it was great. I was very honored. Yeah, uh, so they, I did all his catering. His yeah. fa favorite meal was fillets. Yeah. Then, well, I'm really disappointed, Carl, that I don't think I got an invitation to any of those uh, private parties. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I used to have breakfast with them at Mitch Album's house. Oh, you did? Oh, so the two of them are kind of Well, I introduced... Ah, now it, the plot thickens. I see where this is going. And I introduced him to Mitch, Mitch Album. You did? Yeah. Okay. Well, good. So we had some good and I'm not, And I'm not going to hold you responsible because you didn't know about Wednesdays with Lori. No. The story I wrote about my wife. Correct. Yeah, okay. But now you know. Yes. All right, so. Other celebrities was, uh, I got a good story about Matt Stafford. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. The baseball player, right? No. I didn't think so. The football player. Okay, I was going to say hockey, but, I, you know. Or I soccer player. Of, yeah, yeah. I'm a big sports fan, as you know. Like, I'm really excited about the Tigers right now. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for the fourth quarter of every game because that's when the action really happens. They're doing great. So Matt Stafford comes in my store. Yeah. And it's in August when all the kids were going back to school. Yeah. So I see this guy come in, and I go, wow, he'll be a good guy to work here. Yeah. So I didn't know who he was. Yeah. I went up to him. I go, hi, are you looking for a job? And he looks at me, and he smiles. He goes, well, I have one. I go, what do you do? He goes, I'm a quarterback. Yeah. And then I realized it was Matt Stafford. I go, oh, my God, you're Matt Stafford. Why would you? Was he wearing a football helmet no. or anything? No. So okay. he smiles, and he goes, I'm Matt Stafford. Then I realized that's Matt Stafford. I mean, but how do you know that it was really him? Well, then I realized it was him. Uh, yeah. Did you ask to see identification? No. <laughs> okay. I think that, uh, you know, there are Matt Stafford imposters, but let's just go with it. Fine. You got Fine. it. He left the village, didn't he? Yes, he yeah. did, because they, they wouldn't let him put a fence on his No, property. that's not the true story. The true story is what I'm told is too many people were hassling him. They wanted his autograph. Oh, I right. was not one of yes, them. Yes, you're right. I never bothered him. But yes, I, he he left in a bit of a huff. I think is he still playing baseball? Uh, you no, mean hockey football? or football? Yeah, football. Yes. Yeah. Oh, is he? Mm -hmm. For what team? Do you know? I believe the Seahawks or something. Or Cal the Rams. I'm sorry, California. Yeah, one of those. Yeah. yeah. Okay. L.A. Rams. All right. Who else? Aretha Franklin used to come in the store. Did she, did she ever pay her bills? She paid cash. <laughs> yeah, well, I would not take no, she cash. has she has a, no, a notorious reputation, she as, did, yes. as you may know, yeah. uh, or maybe you don't know. Um, and I, there's a story that she uh, she had a pet, a lovable pet, like like Franklin, for instance. Okay. And she took her pet to the vet, who's someone in in the community that we know well. And when the vet told her. Uh, what the cost was going to be, she refused mm -hmm. to pay it. And she left her pet with the vet. And with the vet. Yeah. So that's, uh, I mean, I give her a lot of R-E-S-P-E-C-T, but how do you do that? Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so that's Aretha. Aretha. Right. And she paid her bills. She oh, paid, she paid cash, you said. She paid cash. She used to get lamb chops from us, and she would eat them in the aisle way. <laughs> I can tell you uh, that doesn't surprise me. Right. Um, I, I happen to know a story about, um, you know, we, we were talking earlier in the show about Don Was, prolific producer, and uh, I think he came all the way in from Los Angeles to meet her at Baco for a, a, a meeting to right. talk about a record. And uh, he showed up at the appointed time, and she was walking out uh, with a carryout. Right. She had decided that she was hungry and she needed to have her dinner and, uh, and just decided to leave. And so Don, I think, flew all the way into Detroit to yeah. meet with her. And Baco's owned by Luciano. Yeah. Let's ignore him. And he's supposed to have us over at his house for dinner. Okay. In a couple weeks. Okay. You like to point out all these people that are inviting you places that I don't get invited to. So. Well, maybe I mean, you need to invite me. Well, maybe you should mention me to Luciano. Yeah, I will. Yeah. What's he doing now? Has he got anything going? He owns Pernoy in Birmingham. Yeah. He sold his place. We got rid of us Bacos there. Yeah. What, do you know what they're doing with that, that location? They've, there's a fence up around Yeah, I'm not sure exactly. That's a surprising thing. But he's a great person. And well, I'll take your word for it because, like I said, I, I mean, I only went there and spent money right? for whatever that's worth. His food was good, though. No, I know his food was very good. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I, so so uh, who else? Any other notable? Well, was? yeah, I used, um, during Thanksgiving time, so this guy named Benny Modena. Yeah. He used to be the manager of Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. And I used to do cooking for him. He liked I used to cook his turkey legs, yeah. so he loved that, and I would do his cooking every year for him. Yeah, do you, and you, do you still do that? Not anymore. No, no, no. Nothing, so I wonder if, uh, could you mention my name? I, you know, I'm a notary, but I could learn to make turkey legs. Yeah. How hard is that? It's not that hard. Okay, so anybody can do it, right? Not anybody. Okay, but if I had a jacket like yours, Maybe you and could I put do it. Chef Michael on it, 
I could just like. Well, we I mean, I, we have the kind of glasses, you yeah. know. We got that. I mean, going. we'll see about that. Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't want to make them out. But I don't want. Boy, people are turning on me out here. They think I'm giving you a hard time. Right. I, I love the guy. I really love the guy. I do. Okay. What else? What well, else? Gerard Butler. Who's Gerard Butler? He's an actor that was in town when Hugh Jackman was in town. Yeah. And uh, what would I recognize him from? Just movies that he did. You yeah. don't know Gerard I don't, Butler? I don't know who he is, but yeah. I, my crack staff here will find a photograph. They'll put it up on the big screen, and then I'll be embarrassed when I right. see it. Right, And I'll say, oh, that guy. Well, had I known. You know. And then Sean Penn. Hey, Sean Penn? Yeah, he came Was in here in the village? Yes. What was he doing? When Hugh Jackman was here, he came in for a movie, but I don't know which movie. I forgot. Or maybe he just came in for your lamb chops. Maybe. Or turkey chops. Yes, maybe. Yeah. All right, were there any people in the village uh, that uh, never paid you, you know, were scuff laws? Do you want to mention any names? Um, no, I don't think we should. No, everybody if paid. If there were attorneys, we don't need that Everybody kind. paid their bills. Yeah. How about me? Did I pay it timely? Um, never. Never? No. And I often asked for, you know, like payment plan. Right. Because we, you know, my kids would go in. Correct. Little Justin, my God. This kid, you know, we had a charge. Everybody had a charge. They figure if it's a charge, it's like nothing, right? So they'd come in and buy all kinds of stuff. Right. And then I'd get the bill and I'd go, what the? What? And then I, one little girl came in one day and she bought eighty dollars worth of candy. <laughs> and then well, in your store, that was one bag of uh, uh, Hershey's Kisses, for right, God's sakes. Right. So her father came in the next day and he canceled the charge. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the beginning of the end. About right? a week later, he reopened the charge. He did. Okay, but he took his little kids off the charge? I'm no, because I guess the daughter cried to him and he left that on. <laughs> no, that's what always happens. These kids, man, they're out of control. I know. That's another problem we have in this country today is kids are out of control. Yep. Am I right? <laughs> of course I'm right. Yep. All right, what, so what else? So what are you doing now, Carl? Well, right now, since I have MS, yes. I am semi-retired. Yes, you are. I work out three, four days a week. And you work out with uh, Mindy Eisenberg? Mindy Eisenberg, I do yoga with her Good on Thursdays. Good. She's, Mindy Eisenberg is going to be a guest on the show uh, in the upcoming weeks. Right. So I go to this place called Fit. Uh -huh. It's on Orchard Lake across from the Lodge restaurant. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I go there like three days a week. Mm. And that's, I do well with that. Well, let me tell you, man, uh, you know, my mother had MS her entire life. God bless her. Estelle, okay. who's pictured here on the desk. And she was ambulatory throughout the entire time. She did stand up shtick at the, uh, at, at the Jewish Center and was completely ambulatory. Except when I was a kid. When I was a kid growing up, my mom was really sick and right. in bed a lot. And my, uh, my Bubby had to help raise us. Um, but, you know, she lived up to uh, 88, 89 years of age. And, you know, she, she persevered. That's so phenomenal. I'm a big supporter of MS. Yep. In fact, I would like to ask people to make donations to the MS Foundation. You can send your checks to me right here at the cable network. MS Foundation, Michael Seltzer Foundation. Don't worry, I'll take care of the money. Anyway, God bless you, Carl. It's Thank a pleasure you. seeing you, man. You Thank look you. great. I'm so happy. Thank this you. audience is loving you, and Thank everybody you. loves you. And I got to mention, my biggest teacher of my cooking was my mom. God bless your mom. So I used to cook with her when I was a little kid. We used yeah. to make homemade meat pies. She taught you everything the you kibbe know. and all that, the homemade rolled doma. We love our moms. Yep. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for being my guest. Thank you so it much. It was great to see you. I appreciate it. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. We got more fun on The Franklin Show. Stay tuned. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. Oh my God, welcome back everybody. Thank you, and I love you too. I love every single one of you. Most of you were here for Carl, but, but, you're in for a special treat because my guests in this segment are my very good friends Andy and Linda Adelson, the proprietors of Everything Goes Estate Sales, and in full transparency, 
I do a little work with these folks. I've been helping out on the weekends. I think if you ask them objectively, they will probably tell you. Michael, I'm, I'm on DoorDash. What do you want for lunch? I want tuna. Okay, okay. okay. So they do take care of me. But I, you Andy, know, what do you want for right, lunch? All right, let's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Andy and Linda are the proprietors of Everything Goes Estate Sales. Proudly. Proudly. 40 years, right? 40 years. You guys have blazed this trail, and I, I couldn't be prouder to work with you. I really enjoy. We have so much fun, and anybody that comes to our estate sales sees, and, and they, you know, they don't understand that we actually do this, and it's a living, and it's, it's a business. Mm -hmm. And people are dependent upon And it's a privilege. And it's a privilege to work with the And to be clients. in these beautiful homes that we're right. allowed to be in week after week. Right. So, so walk through the process. You, you go meet with somebody who's thinking about having an estate sale. How does that go? Well, they'll call me up and I go to their house. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll walk through. They'll show me the contents of the home. Yeah. And then we'll have some discussion about logistics and set sale dates. Then I come back with our crew, and we arrange the entire house. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a long time to yeah, get them yeah. arranged. And sometimes, sometimes it takes a real sometimes long time. Sometimes you need to wear gloves. And sometimes you need to wear gloves. But, but ultimately, we make the house look beautiful. It looks like a boutique store. And then we price everything. Right. Uh, put pictures on online for everyone to see. So if anybody needs to you know, know that we're on estatesales.net, you can go on estatesales.net and look for our sales. Uh, and then we typically open uh, over the weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and sell everything that's in the home. Uh, and then on Monday, Habitat or a charity comes. Some, mo most likely it's Habitat for Humanity. They'll take away unsold items, which usually there's not much. And then uh, we're responsible to make sure the house is completely empty and clean for the new owners to move in. Now, let me, let me start with this and just get this out of the way. Normally, before you do the estate sale, you have to go get a permit, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so, for instance, you would go into, say, the village of Franklin, where the show emanates, and you would go in to get a permit. Now, I understand recent years uh, our permit fee was a dollar, which to me, as a council member, is like a waste of time and energy. It costs more than a dollar just to get them to prepare the paperwork. Absolutely. So I said to our city manager, the village manager at the time, Kelda London, I said, when my friend Andy comes in here to get a permit for this Franklin sale, tell him it's a thousand dollars. Did I say a thousand or ten? A thousand. A thousand, I think. Yeah, a thousand. And tell him I said so. And so she did that. And then you told her, as I recall, the next time Michael comes into the village office to give him a shit bow. That's correct. Now, a shit bow, for those of you who aren't fans of Larry David and Curb Your Enthusiasm, is a disrespectful bow. It's not like a bow of grace and honor to somebody who is honored in a community like I am. And so I came in and she gave me the shit bow. And I said, It's a bow of disrespect. That's as right. Opposed to, that's uh, right. As opposed to respect. And I said to Kelda, a uh, former member of the <laughs> uh, Franklin Village staff, who told you to do that? And she said, Well, your friend Andy. So that was a lot of fun. But the bottom line is, you didn't have to spend $1,000 to have that sale. Nope, not we, on that one. Yeah, okay. So just I wanted to clear that up for the record because it's been rumored out there for a long time. So, who are the most famous people that you've had sales for? Can you can you can you mention any I famous know, people? I mean, we, we had a lot of famous we customers. Have, we, I mean, <clears throat> um, uh, Chuck Daly, hmm. Chuck Daly's sale. I Bob don't Seger. remember what year. I sent you a picture of the Chuck Daly was the manager of the, of the uh, Red Pist Wings, right? No, the Pistons. And it we was, um, this is the but, second but, sports but, but, reference. We on the had show a today. line. Chuck, Chuck had already been had already passed he had away. Passed away. So we yes. were actually working for Terry Daly, his wife. Oh, so Chuck didn't even know you guys. No. So you're just dropping his. Oh, name. his spirit was there. Believe me. <laughs> yeah. Believe you know, really, was there a always. lot of basketballs and crap or what? Always. There was some. Oh, there was a there lot. Was, there was memorabilia. <laughs> there you was a had lot of memorabilia. Great, great clothes. We had a line all day long. Okay, yeah. I'll go on to the next one. 
Uh, I'm not done with Chuck Daly. Okay. What about his wardrobe? He had fabulous suits, right? He had very big gym shoes, yeah. you know, sign, yeah. very big. But what about um, his suits? Because he was like, he was the spokesman for Cousins Clothes. I don't remember I his don't, suits. I don't remember if we had his clothing. I don't no. remember. Probably not. Mm -hmm. Probably mm -hmm. not. I mean, okay. well, the sale was To me, that would have been the most important thing. But go on with the rest of your little... Uh, Terry Mills. Who? Terry Mills. I don't know who that is. A, a Detroit Piston. Oh, another sports. What about Bob Seeger? Bob Seeger. I bought his uh, purple couch, didn't I? Or I sat on his purple couch. There's a picture of me on a. You moved that sale into a warehouse in yes. Birmingham. Yes, yes. Am I right? Bob Seeger's things. And in there's Birmingham. a famous picture of me, which you'll be seeing on the screen soon, of me wearing a, a sort of a crazy hat and a fur Imagine thing. Imagine that. Imagine. And I was sitting on the purple couch. I, I remember. I do remember that. I yeah. think one of the one of our one of our sales that tops the list, mm -hmm. top five, mm -hmm. would be the Adams Castle. Oh my God. The Adams Castle was amazing. The line looked like Disney World. It did. I remember that sale. We well, bought pizza mm -hmm. for the people in line. Actually we had actually we did um, uh, donuts and cider. Oh. Donuts and oh, cider from the mill. Franklin. Yeah, from cider the Franklin mill? cider mill. Yes, that, 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 we did. Okay, because she's going to be a guest on the show next week, and she wouldn't be happy. If yeah, she, people were lined Peltz, up there from the Peltz family. 8 a.m. Yeah. to 4 p.m. I remember that, and you and were the out. Line never, you were out with a bullhorn. Actually, you don't need a bullhorn. Yeah. You were just out talking, yeah. telling people that they had to be orderly, and we would take people what 20 at a time or something. It was yeah, a mess. we always we uh, crowd control is of the utmost importance every week. So the Adams yeah. Castle. We have to honor probably the, home. the, lar the largest single uh, home sale that we've done. And it took us about six weeks to get it ready. Yeah, God. We were open for the first weekend with a, a line of people the entire time. They're out of tuna. Yeah, then, then we, we reset everything up for the next weekend. So we opened up the next weekend and had a line of people the whole time that we were there. And then we closed it down for a month and came back a month later and did it again. So the yes. house was 26,000 square feet in yeah, total. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a unique sale, yeah, right? We had friends come be, and, and to help, help us. To help, yeah, uh, everybody help we knew. Us take we care had, of customers. My friend Terry Holmes was one to. of the salespeople. Yes. And I'll never forget. I that, have a video of Tim. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking. I mean, you had to have a whole. I mean, how many people were working during this? There had to be 20. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. There yeah. were a lot. Yeah. yeah. And their staff. Yeah, right. So right. there was the main house, and then there was the carriage house, or the guest house, yeah. or the, in their case, the servant's house. Right. And then there was the, uh, there was a large, uh, like a planet, planetarium thing where they had right. all their, their plant material. It was all great, unique stuff. And, and that's oh, what's and so, the pool house. what's so cool about this is that every yeah. sale is unique and that they're a treasure hunt. We were at a sale this past weekend in Boston Edison. Yeah. And this monstrous, beautiful, fabulous home. Yeah. With just great, cool stuff. Yeah, we met new friends. And new people. And that is something that is so amazing, is yeah. the people we meet. That's and right. And the friends we've made, yeah. and the customers we've had from sale number one, which is a whole story, to, um, <laughs> to this weekend sale. What sale? What sale number one? Our very first sale. Talk about that sale. Sale number one was in Southfield. Mm -hmm. We were working for a woman. I guess I shouldn't say her name. No. She called. Well, Andy. we'll bleep it out if you want to say she it. She called Andy at two a.m. It was an amazing sale. I think there were like three motorcycles for sale. Hmm. Uh, it was an amazing sale. She called Andy at two a.m. That some ghosts or some spirits were going to take her away and Andy needed to come make sure they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first Our sale? Very and first from there sale. you decided to make this into a career? I don't remember that, but okay. <laughs> Andy went there. From cottages to castles. That's right. That's and exactly so right. It's, and I mean, it's really a, a very specialized business. It, it is. And when you first started, who was the competition? There wasn't much competition, was there? No, there was. There were a couple of companies that did what we did. And yeah. and today, 
There are a lot of companies. A lot it's of companies. very different. But the difference is you've been doing this for 40 years. You're expert at it. You know what things are worth. And you know how to work with clients who everybody thinks their stuff is worth more than it is. I mean, let's face it. We all think our homes are worth more. Our cars are worth more. You have to have a reality one-on-one discussion, right? And customer needs to know, we're going to do the very best we can. I know when I come to work and I do what I do, I have fun doing it. I find it entertaining. Do you learn something? And I learn right. because I meet people all the time. Right. And they always give you the same lines. Well, I don't really need this. It's not about need, it's about want. Well, it's not for me, it's for my cousin. Oh, your cousin's not worth this? You know, I mean, the, the lines are great. But we have the regular stories customers. Are amazing. We have regular customers that come. I shouldn't say we. You have regular customers. I'm honored to be a part of that, and I'm hitting my mic. Um, and I'm happy to wear a soul sign. So I um, I got to wrap this up. But I I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come and be on the Franklin Show. It's a little bit of a stretch because you're not Franklin, but because I'm associated. Do you know how many people could, we've worked for in Franklin? Oh, I'm sure. We worked for some people in Franklin. I won't mention their name because I didn't ask. Oh, Mitch if Mondry I, was one I didn't because ask I have him his rug could, in my living room. Uh, uh, <laughs> if we can, Alan Bitker, for sales. Yeah, yeah. yeah for well, the, that guy can't keep a home. That's his problem. Right. And so, Alan, if you're looking in, I didn't really say that. But anyway, some of our almost, some of our very uh, best sales have been in Franklin. Almost two thousand sales. Really, two thousand wow. sales. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. I mean, that's that's, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I often say she works for the competition. <laughs> I mean, I'm struggling you know, you to get know. a number, and she'll come and undercut me, and I'm saying I'm working for you, trying to get you more. Yeah, yeah, but what about this weekend when you're sitting at the dining table and I walk up and I see you're working with the mm -hmm. customer and you're like, mm, right? She's gonna, and I say she's to trying you, to take credit for the sale that you and I and it, I say. It, and I say to you, I know. oh, so I knew what you were doing. You're trying yeah. to sell the dining table. It's all about you. So yeah. I say to you, oh, well, I just got a call. Got the phone I wanted with to somebody let you know that like, I, people like, are coming right away for the dining table. We, like, we don't we, use that. We, we need, you see the clock? The we, we needed that help. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you had the two best sales guys I know, kicking ass. I know. And you huh. thought that you were going to take but credit for that. It didn't work. But that's why we're a team. And Thanks. then we have beautiful Lori we're not at, at the at the desk. Thank you and for mentioning have, Lori. And we, she works her ass we off. We have beautiful helping Lori you guys. who works so hard. And listen, our son Jason yes. has followed in our footsteps. Yeah. We are so proud of him. Jason he's, knows he's how to He's opened his sale. own company. He has the greatest asset in his wife, Amanda. Mm, they true. are the estate sales. Any other stupid plugs you want to get in? The, you see the clock of says the zero? <laughs> of All right. the future. Thank you guys for being here. Linda and Andy, you, my Michael. dear good friends for 40 years. Good friends. Kids grew up together. It's my pleasure, my honor. Love Thank you. you. All right, folks, we'll be right back. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Yes, I love you too. Yes. Mwah. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. What a great audience. What a great show. I am so happy. What a fabulous show. I do want to thank uh, my executive producer, Carrie Lazat, who isn't here. Uh, apparently, she was on vacation uh, during the first taping, and uh, yesterday she got a paper cut so she asked if she could uh, take the day off so thanks Carrie for absolutely oh how about this the plant Carrie if you had anything to do with this plant uh, you're forgiven and Steve I don't know what your story is but uh, we'll catch up uh, shortly after the show and we'll figure that out I really uh, want to thank my guest chef Carl Hakeem a uh, former Market Basket, Lyndon Andy Adelson, Everything Goes. Next week, big show, folks, Jason Alexander. Yes, the Broadway superstar and former member of Seinfeld will be here. And Big Gretch, Governor Gretchen Whitmer will be our guest on the next Franklin Show. I thank you all. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks to everybody, and good night. Thank you.